All right. Hey, <laughs> another we've killed a ton of these. Okay, loved by enough time to row, but hate dislike by grazing hedonists. Okay, I think that those are the equimaxes. So let's get into trouble with robots. How about that? Yeah. Grazing heat in this. Oh, kind of not worth it, but whatever. Semi-automatic pistol. That's going to get disassembled. And the plastic tree. Give me that plastic. Okay. What do we have here? Nothing. Okay, these are just the... The slain naphtalis. Okay. La Bloom. Alright, okay. Good. Good, good, good. Slowly making our way towards the jungle. Need to be careful in the jungle. So, tip for beginners. When you are in the jungle, you're probably going to be able, like if you get to the jungle at 15 or something like that, uh, you're going to be able to kill the goats pretty well. Uh... If you see a group, a boss group of goats, get out of there. Run like hell. Just from you to uh, from me to you. Just a word of advice. <laughs> because they're going to murder you. The goat bosses are troublesome. And Psst. goat bosses are troublesome and uh the group of goats in itself is dangerous because you know they will have shamans uh, that will confuse you and they will have a lot of stuff they will have uh, these fear inducing things and everything combined will just murder you usually like maybe take them on at i don't know above 20 or something like that but uh, you might be lucky but yeah. If Aquamaxes are grazing hedonists, are they a Gulliver's Travel reference? That could be, right? I never thought about that, but sure. Or are they grazing hedonists? I'm actually not sure on it right now. Is there a different faction for horses? I mean, there's not. A oh no, equines. It's equines. They're not grazing hedonists. Okay. Or they are both? It could be that they are both. That they have two factions. Not quite sure about that. Thing is, you can not really find that out because uh, I've never seen a an Aquamax boss. That would tell you. More lava petals. Okay, and here we are in the jungle. Okay, so let's slowly make our way in. Um, need to be careful about, especially the goat folk sowers, like their explosive things are a bit troublesome because they explode and they can really drain your HP. Okay, jungle. Okay, we have good folks savage. That's fine. Okay, Elastan skin suit, two carbide long swords. Yeah. These folks are usually dropping some good stuff. Okay, let's get this guy to come towards us. Where are you? Oh, went away somewhere. Hmm. The uh, the good folk are kind of the best way to get to level 20. Oh, not the best way, but they're a good way to get to level 20. They give a decent amount of experience, and even beyond level 20, you can still can still fight them and get stuff. I'm going to pick up a bunch of sower seeds again, just to have like maybe 10 or something. 
Uh, for once we go to Golgotha, we want some explosives to destroy the... To destroy the... Um, Mm, yes, you're not aggro. That's good. Um, to destroy the sludge. To be less likely to get ill. To get terrible diseases. Down there. So, yeah. I usually just walk through the jungle a bunch. Collect a number of seeds. And, yeah. Pandemonium Lords in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. So different, not ra rarely with body horror. Okay. Alright. I mean, Pandemonium Lords sounds imposing. Like, if you are a Pandemonium Lord, you're probably not the friendliest person in town. Ah, a Steel Buckler. Good. Oh, shit. That is probably a boss group <laughs> okay shit. shit 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 okay we're going to take a self injector let's keep our keep our cool here apply the self injector I'm going to start sprinting Still sprinting. Oh dear. I should go back. Ah! And I'm dead. Why did I. Again, I did not take my time. And I'm dead. Level 15. Jesus. Ah. You know, I was waxing lyrical about goat folk boss groups. And here we go. Died to one of them. You know, when there's a horn blower and a lot of goats around, this, it's probably a boss group. But as you can see, like just the, it wasn't even the boss, just the goats and the sowers punching you or not blowing you up. That's, uh, that's the trouble. All right, so how, how are we doing? Okay. Thank you, thank you in the chat for the encouraging words. So what should we do? Uh, daily challenge, should I do a daily challenge? And we're just going to create a new character. So we're going to go mutate it again. And, uh, okay, let's do the basic stuff. 16 here. We don't need that much intelligence. Okay. Probably like that. Yeah, sure. Get another toughness. Another ego. Let's get another ego. Okay, morphotypes. We're going to be an Esper. Um, we're going to go with mental mutations, obviously. And I'm going to get... Let me see. We're going to definitely get light manipulation as a basic thing. You can suggest some weird builds. Okay, I mean, sure, suggest a build. Suggest a weird build. Then I'm just going to scrap this stuff. And yeah. If not, we can still play an Esper, right? Maybe the next one. Playing an Esper is always pretty rough for the you know, for the first 15 levels or something. And uh, it gets... And then... Then everyone is in trouble. <laughs> Mutated human... And, you know, let's start building the Esper, but... Um, but uh, so if you want to suggest a build, suggest a way. I'm going to make a note of that. And... Uh, and maybe try it in one of my runs. You know, good thing about these kinds of roguelikes is you die and you do another run. So, um, yeah. Okay, so. So we're definitely going 18 toughness. 18 strength. 16 here. 
16, 14 intelligence. Yeah, why not? We don't need that much intelligence. Let's do it like that. Morphotypes, Esper. Okay, physical, mental, mutations. So... Uh, the light manip. Temporal fugue is nice, but... Hmm. Pyrokinesis, indeed. I mean, that would be, again, kind of the boring thing, but to get this... Um, maybe clairvoyance. Maybe clairvoyance. All right, thank you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make a note of that. And maybe I'm going to try them in the future. Let me just, whoops, 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 whoops. Ah, I'm going to copy them into my notepad after I'm done with the stream. Cool, thanks a lot. Muvellini, nerd, blend the blender. But yeah, they're not good builds. Okay, it's fine. You know, that's not the that's not the point of it, isn't it? <laughs> I'm pretty intrigued by the nerd. The blender also sounds interesting. The COVID, yeah. Uh, well, let's just go ahead. Mental defects. Should we get some weird stuff like evil twin? We could play an evil twin character. Should we play? Let's play an evil twin character. Um, cr okay. No, no, no. Let's do some weird thing. Let's do this, right? Light manipulation, cryokinesis, temporal fugue. So we have we have an evil twin. Well, we can also summon our good twins. So we will have the opportunity for epic battles between ourselves and ourselves. Isn't that good? I'm into that. Okay, continue. Continue. Uh, let's be... Should we be apostle? I'm never really into... Nah, let's be water merchant. I've never gotten into being able to proselytize and have have folks with us. All right. I mean, it's not like yeah, but let's be Jekyll. It's not that's not exactly fitting, but uh, for our specific predicament. But yeah. Okay. Uh, let's trade. Give me that glow sphere. Oh, we're starting out with a ton of useless weaponry. Let me see. What should we? Should we do may? Oops, no. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, let's keep these for now. Get rid of the torches. Yeah. Yeah, right, high ego. I need to readjust to that. Um, okay. Here we go, axes. Well, we could go with axes, why not? We're not going to use that very much. Okay, so, wait. Oops. No, no, this. Okay, so we're going to have laser on one, chill on two, temporal fugue on three. Everything is already properly assigned. And, okay, weird artifact stun gas grenade. We're not going to be very good at identifying artifacts. Maybe we should leave that to folks who are better at it, like our guy, for example. Okay, that, that, don't need that, what do you have? Okay, you have a bunch of stuff, strange tubes, that's probably a gun, mossy, smoky, rosy, 
Let's get the rosy tube. Uh, the rosy... The rosy tube. Let's see what that is. And... Uh, maybe the carbide battle axe. Why not? And the desert... And one desert rifle. Sure. That works. Alright. Yeah. We have enough water. It doesn't matter. So, uh, let's go. Arm battle axe. We can get rid of that. Okay. I'm going to put the glow sphere here. We're not going to dual wield anyways, so it's fine. Um, what else did I get? Forgot about it again. Oh yeah, right. Desert rifle. Sure. Did I get the lead slugs? No, I did not. Okay. Here we go. Trade complete. Reload that desert rifle. Let's take a look at that thing. Chevenu. Where's Chevenu? Chevenu is way south. Interesting. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Argive. You good. You good. Okay. What knickknacks do we have? Stun gas grenade, so we can at least do this. Um. Please identify this for me. Yeah, sure. That's an Uber Nostrum injector. Good stuff. Cool. All right. Um, no, I'm actually, I'm not going to go down here. We are playing in Esper, so we need to be super careful at the start. So I'm going to do the classic Esper start, which is going fishing. We might actually run into our evil twin already. I think this is our evil twin. I think I saw my evil twin. This is my evil twin. Okay. Right. Good twin. How about you come in? And I was killed by myself. Okay. Got an achievement for that. But I've never I've ever actually never played evil twin. Um, that is fun. You know what? I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do this again. This is ridiculous. The interesting thing is, uh, since we have Temporal Fugue, I think... I think our Evil Twin will also have Temporal Fugue, right? Does this actually work? I don't know. So we might actually... this might go out of hand. <laughs> this might go... This might go weird. Okay, what is your name? We also need to be careful. I think I'm not going to carry any grenades, by the way. Because we don't want our evil twin to have grenades. What is your name? Um, so, now we're hide. Maybe. What if? Right? Bear with me here. What if we are the evil twin? And they are the good one. Ever thought about that? Huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like, usually playing Caves of Card, you're not actually that good, aren't you? You're not actually... Oh! Well, that was a fast evil twin spawn. That was a fast evil twin spawn. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. You know what, let's do it again. Replay most recent character. <laughs> oh, oh dear. That sounds too much like Looper, indeed. I've never seen Looper, but I know the basic premise of it. <sighs> I'm in search of work. <laughs> Holy gosh, indeed. Okay, thermal grenade. Maybe I don't want that thermal grenade. I think I'm going to give that thermal grenade to to Argive. So what do we have? Okay. Like there's some good. Uh, you should be evenly matched, right? But at the, at the start of this, like one laser eyes could be enough to get killed. So if the other guy shoots first. Our buddy Hyde here is going to going to be in trouble. Oh no, I didn't give a name, didn't I? I bollocks this up. 
Okay. Also, you know, then you got the whole RNG issue. Yeah, let's do it like that. Let's collect all the water. Glowsphere. Um, let's keep the long sword for now. Why not? You know, especially as an Esper at the start, you are so fragile. And yeah. Okay, we definitely just need to be extremely careful in case our buddy shows up. So what do we have? Voidag gland paste. Hmm. Carbide longsword, why not? Um weird artifact. So these are just normal injectors. I'm going to get those, why not? Um, they're not going to be salve and not uber nostrum because they are more costly. Let's get a chain mail and a steel helmet. Why not? Good. Head, steel helmet, body, chain mail, iron longsword, carbide longsword. Okay. I think I'm getting kind of into playing evil twin builds. It's probably not something you want to do if you want to finish the game, but... My, if, if it isn't fun. Okay, we're going to get rid of the grenades. I don't want my evil twin to blow me up. Okay. Alright, as you say. Mutation points. Oh no, we cannot even do this. Can you actually do something with that? No. Um, okay. All right. Let's slowly go north. All right, no evil twin yet. Just a bunch of stuff. We're just going to go hunting for a bit. Um, or rather fishing. The problem with these, <laughs> you get, uh, uh, what I really love is how paranoid I'm getting right now. It's like, okay, I cannot look into every part of the map. <laughs> ah, this is brilliant. Ah, this game is so good. Why is this game so good? Okay. Uh, laser to charges. Let's wait. No evil twin just yet. Evil Osh. Oh, yeah. Evil twin. Here we go. Boom. Let's get our buddy in. Do I have. I don't have temporal fugue active. Nah. Okay. You're going to get frozen, my friend. I'm going to murder you. We've killed Frozen. We got, we killed the evil evil twin. Okay, Frozen Evil Oshro Shum. It's a good name, actually. That you played hundreds of hours of, okay. Unfortunately, the evil twin does not drop anything. I mean, that's okay. That would be overkill. Um, yeah, indeed. This is like one of the, same for me. One of the two or three games I have, which I've played hundreds of hours of, yeah. I think the only game I've played more than this is the first Guild Wars. I had a group of people and we played a lot of Guild Wars back in the day. And that was a lot of fun. But yeah, I think that might be the only game I've played more of. Oh, Sunless Skies. Never played that. I actually have that. I think I got it from like a Humble Bundle or, or something. But uh, never got into it. Always intrigued by it. Always intrigued by what I saw of the light, of the writing, not lighting. <laughs> or thinking about the sunlessness, I guess. Sunless skies, isn't skies the new one? Didn't that just come out? Seas was the original one, right? Oh, neat. Okay. 
<laughs> you know, I'm always kind of, you know, this uh, like sunless seas and skies. They do sort of the, like I don't like steampunk very much. <laughs> Because steampunk tends to be very much about sort of the aesthetics, but not really about the the politics of sort of, you know, it's like all the aesthetics of Victorian England, but none of the imperialism, and it kind of just washes over that. But um, from what I've heard, is like the Sunless games don't do that really. Uh, so that's interesting to me, right? Like, Steampunk usually does not want to engage with all the heinous shit that came together with... Yeah, with the Empire. And, uh... Yeah. So that's good. They're pretty political about it. That uh, makes me want to play it more. Deus Ex, Dungeon Crawl, and GTA V. No, that's also a good selection. Oh yeah, Deus Ex. Should be about resisting empire. Indeed, I totally agree. I mean, it's not li even that it is like explicitly, "Hey, empire is awesome." It's just it just does not want to engage with what that actually means. Aesthetics have meaning in of themselves, in a lot of ways. Okay, uh, Legendary Croc, Lair of the Legendary Croc. I'm not careful enough because there could be... Uh. Yeah morally equal option. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a classic... Okay, that's kind of a classic video game problem with a... Hey, there's two sides to everything. And you can pick between them. Like the... You know... Like the Bioshock Infinite thing. Maybe resistance against oppression is also bad. Nah. Nah. Fail better series? Is that the sunless stuff? I'm not I'm not familiar with that term. Okay. Here we go. Let's just murder some snapshots. Yeah, it's a studio, okay. Alright, beat a bracelet, okay, good. Dogs. You know, when Asimov, you said Deus Ex, that's also something that, uh, you know, cyberpunk is oftentimes a similar thing. Like, the actual cyberpunk stuff that a lot of... Oh shit. That a lot of... Uh, oops. Christ. Okay. That a lot of, you know, current uh, cyberpunk revival stuff goes back to, all right? Like, likes to cite. Um, it's very political. And I'm I'm not really a fan of trying to wash it out of there. Like if you reduce it to pure aesthetics, it's just it feels empty. It's not even like I don't need to. No, it just it's it's just it's even like just on a as a qualitative statement. It's just it feels empty if you have if you've. If it's just a veneer of aesthetics and not really saying anything. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean... That's the thing, right? The thing is, like... Um, if you have a work of media, it's going to say something, right? And... Um, maybe you should think about what it is going to say. Working on a tabletop RPG that does a Shadowrun style cyberpunk fantasy, but is also punk. That's cool. I would be very interested in that. Shadowrun, by the way, is the only tabletop RPG that I've ever played. You know, I wasn't really. Never had many tabletop RPG folks in my circle of friends, so it never really came to that. Wait, where is the... Oh, there. We are at Red Rock, okay. Simple dice chucking dungeon crawler. Hey, we got a bunch of... bunch of tabletop designers in the chat. That's super cool. Own art form. The channel run was first developed. Recent editions of the game haven't quite kept up. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Plus one ego for the rest of the day. Oh, that's neat. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really keep up with tabletop stuff all that much because I'm not, uh, again, I don't really play them. I don't really have a group with which I could, with whom I could play tabletop games currently, so I'm quite out of the loop, but uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes you hear stuff and it sounds interesting. Okay, boom, boom. Yeah, right, right, right. That's also a thing, yeah. Maybe, like, if I did pursue it, I could probably make it, make it happen. But you know, that's, again, <laughs> the, the issue that I've talked about earlier, about uh, limited time, limited time, living in living in this world stuff like that you know okay boom yes Need to not forget about our evil twin. Okay, level five, neat. Okay, attribute point. Oh, I'm going to put that into ego. We have four mutation points already. So we could get a new one, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> also like roguelikes. Yeah, sure. I think it's a very different mode in a way, right? I think what interests me most in the in the tabletop way is not not necessarily the crunching numbers part, but rather the uh, the the telling of stories part. I mean, there's a lot there's a lot of tabletop that is very good at that. Okay. 
Oh gosh, I need to I need to actually wrap this up pretty soon. Because I need to do the thing which is go to work and work. <laughs> so yeah. Um how are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably going to wrap this up in the next five minutes or something. But yeah. <sighs> like both number crunching and storytelling. Yeah. I also enjoy the number crunching, but uh, usually like... <laughs> that's kind of a thing that I like in computer games, where some of the number crunching can be left to the computer. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's actually... It's not one or the other, you know. But I would like... You know, if, if I was starting... If I was playing tabletop, I would enjoy an experience that computer games cannot give me in the same way, right? And that's kind of the... And that emergent and... Like the possibility space of tabletop is a different one and that's kind of what interests me maybe maybe like that okay um yeah i'm going to wrap it up here folks thanks to everyone for hanging out in the chat that was a lot of fun and uh yeah thanks for watching and uh have a nice day have a nice week have a nice life and uh yeah there's some good discussion going on in the chat i I'm unhappy to cut that off, but uh, I need to go. All right, so see y'all around. Bye-bye.